got another set of exam questions on the transition elements topic, so we're up to number 9 now. As with all of the others, the link to the questions in the description of the video, so just click on that, have a go at the question, and then play on for the answers. Okay, so make a start then. So what's the oxidation number of chromium in this complex ion? So if we factor in the oxidation numbers we know about, so minus 2 for that oxygen, 5 times minus 1, so minus 5 for the 5 chlorines, so that's minus 7 from those two um, types of atom. We need to be left with 2 minus, so therefore chromium must be plus 5. Now, there's lots of options you can go for for B. I've come up with a couple of examples. So the first one I'm going to give is the hydrogenation of alkenes. So the equation I've gone for is just the hydrogenation of ethane to make ethane, and the catalyst is nickel. And the other example I'm going to give is the manufacture of ammonia in the Haber process. So there's the equation there. Don't worry if you haven't put reversible arrows, it'll be fine with just a single arrow and the catalyst is iron. Part C now, so what's meant by the term bidentate ligand? So that's a species that can donate two electron pairs to a central metal ion and form two coordinate bonds or two date of covalent bonds in the process. Next part, we've got to work out the molecular formula of the bidentate ligand B. So the complex obviously has the central nickel three plus ion and then all of these atoms collectively make the three bidentate ligands. So all we need to do is divide the atoms by three to get the formula of the ligand. So there's the formula there, C3, H10, N2. Next part, we've got to come up with this possible structure for B and explain how it's able to act as a bidentate ligand. You'll notice I've already drawn this up here. So I imagine most people already know about ethane 1,2-diamine. That's, that's one of the examples I always give as a, for a bidentate ligand. The only difference between the atoms of the molecular formula of that and that is a carbon and two hydrogens. So it's going to have that structure there. And why is it able to act as a bidentate ligand? Well, on each nitrogen, there's a lone pair of electrons and it can obviously donate those to the central transition metal ion. Moving on to the coordination number for complex ion A. So it's going to be six, and that's because if you've got three of these ligands, each one can donate two electron pairs. So there's actually six coordinate bonds going to the central metal ion. And the last part of C, we've got to complete these 3D diagrams for the optical isomers. And they've been really nice by just saying you can use this to represent the bidentate ligand. So I'll start off and I'll put my first bidentate ligand there. Put the next one there. And I'll put the third one there. So because I've put them like that, I've got to mirror that in the right hand structure. So this here would be there. So my next one goes there, and my third one goes there. And finally for part D, we had to give the observations and the equations for these three reactions of aqueous copper 2 plus ions. Now all of them would start out with the hexa-aqua copper 2 ion, because that's what you've got in aqueous copper 2 solutions. So the first one, you'd go from a blue solution, which is due to this complex ion, to a pale blue precipitate of copper 2 hydroxide. So you can either give the sort of more complicated version of the equation, or you could just go for this simple version. The second reaction, where the aqueous copper 2 ions are reacted with an excess of ammonia, you go from that blue solution, remember, because of this, and it goes to a deep blue solution due to this complex ion formed here. And the final one, you've got the aqueous copper 2 ions reacting with hydrochloric acid. So your blue solution, due to that, is going to go to a yellow or yellow-green solution due to this um, complex ion of copper and chloride ions. It hasn't asked for the reaction type. Sometimes it does, so I'll just mention it just for revision purposes. So a bit of a clue there. This is a precipitation reaction. And these two here 
are both ligand substitution reactions.